Setting up your drip irrigation system can feel overwhelming, but there's a few things you can do to help reduce that stress. So today, I'm gonna share five tips to help you be more successful while setting up your drip irrigation system. Stick around, this is In The Garden. Thanks for joining me. Whether you're a new viewer or a returning subscriber, I'm glad you're here. This is In The Garden, where I share tips and tools to help new gardeners be successful in backyard vegetable gardening. Today, I'm talking about drip irrigation. I was getting ready to start setting up my drip irrigation system for the spring growing season, and I thought of some tips that I would like to share that are gonna help make your life just a little less stressful while setting up your drip irrigation system. Before I get started, make sure you hit the like button, and if you're new here, consider subscribing. Now let's get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is how do you organize all these drip irrigation parts that you're going to need to set up your drip irrigation system. A lot of them, they come in bags like these and they're just loose parts and these bags are not a very good way to keep them organized. I typically, when I first started gardening, I would just throw them in a cardboard box or in a plastic bag and I would just keep everything, but it was really messy and it was hard to keep track of what I actually had, what I needed. And then at the beginning of the season, I didn't know what I needed to go buy. So it was just really unorganized. So what I found that works really well is using a plastic tackle box tray. These are really great for the drip irrigation parts. They have little compartments. You can put all the pieces into different compartments so you can keep them really well organized. It's really easy to open it up and look and see what you have so you know what you need to buy and replace, what you need more of or what you have plenty of. Having your parts in a tray like this is gonna make it a lot easier when you actually go out into your garden and start setting up your drip irrigation. It's gonna keep the parts not only organized so you can get to them easily and quickly, but it's gonna keep them out of the dirt. It's gonna keep you from accidentally losing parts in your garden while you're setting it up. These parts are not terribly expensive, but they're not cheap either. So you don't wanna just be losing them out in your garden because they fell out of the bag and you, you didn't see them when they got pushed under some dirt or something. And also if they get into the dirt, they're gonna start getting clogged and you just run into a ton of problems. So using a plastic tray like this is actually a really good way to keep them all organized, nice and neat. And these trays are not expensive. You can pick one up either at your local Walmart or order one online and it, they probably cost you about three to four dollars, maybe five, but they're really inexpensive. And if you get one like the one I'm using, it has these movable dividers, so you can make the spaces as big and small as you need to fit all the different parts you're going to be putting into it. Next, I wanna talk about the drip irrigation tubing. One of the biggest complaints with it, especially for people that have never worked with it before, is that it's really hard to get it to go where you want it to go. Because it's been stored in a spool and possibly even for a very long time, when you go to unravel it, it doesn't want to lay out straight and flat. It wants to curl back up, it gets kinked, it does a bunch of things you're not wanting it to do. So it's really hard to work with. Now a really easy tip to make it a lot easier to work with is before you go out to work on your drip irrigation system, maybe a half an hour or an hour before depending on how warm it is outside, you want to just take that tubing and set it in the sunlight. Let it warm up underneath the sunlight and it's going to make it a lot easier to unravel and place it where you want it to be. And if you have the space for it, you can actually unravel it after you've let it sit for a little bit and got it's gotten warm. You can unravel it and straighten it out and leave it sitting in the sun just a little bit longer. And then it's gonna stay straight a lot easier and you're gonna be able to put it wherever you need it to be in your garden without the stress of it trying to roll back up. Next, I wanna talk about the drip emitters. In my video where I talk about how to set up your very first drip irrigation system, I mentioned that I use one size emitter throughout my entire garden. This is a really great tip to help keep it just a little simpler for you. If you're trying to put different size emitters for different plants, you're just making it a lot more complicated and it's gonna be a lot more work for you, not only while setting it up this year, but again next year when you go to replant. You're not gonna put the same uh, plants in the same locations year after year. So the larger emitters and smaller emitters, they're gonna have to be moved around every year for the plants that you're planting. It's a lot easier if you just put the same size throughout your entire garden and then you don't have to worry about where the different ones are. If you have a plant that needs more water, you can always put two or even three emitters on that plant to give it more. But 
it's just a lot simpler than mixing up the different size emitters. Now, if you're setting up something that's more like a permanent garden, not your seasonal vegetable garden, you might wanna use those different size emitters because they're gonna go in one time and stay there. So that's a better solution for those types of applications. But for your vegetable garden, I definitely recommend one size emitter for everything. Next, I wanna share a tip for when you're placing your quarter inch line to each of your plants. When you're measuring it out, you don't wanna put just enough of the quarter inch line. It's fairly inexpensive, so you wanna add a little extra to each plant and it's just gonna make it a lot easier for you. Next year, when you go to replant your garden, if you don't plant in the exact same places, those drip lines that you placed this year might not reach if you don't have enough extra on them. So you always wanna add anywhere from six to 18 inches on each quarter inch line to each plant. And it also makes it a lot easier if you have a damaged drip emitter or you need to make a repair. Because you have that extra tubing on there, you can cut it off and not have to replace the whole piece to make that repair. And finally, I wanna talk about how you plan to control your drip irrigation system once you have it all set up. If you're spending the money and taking the time and putting in all the work to set up your drip irrigation system, you wanna make sure you're controlling it in the best way possible. If you're planning on just going out and turning on and off the faucet every time you need to water, you're kind of wasting what your drip irrigation system can do. I always recommend you use an automatic timer as part of your drip irrigation system. These can range anywhere from really small, cheap, inexpensive timers to more elaborate, expensive ones that connect to your phone and can be controlled wirelessly. But regardless of the type of timer, I definitely recommend you install something on your drip irrigation system. There's a lot of issues that can arise with trying to go out and turn on and off the water every time it needs to be watered manually. One of the biggest things that happens is that the water gets turned on and then forgotten about. This is especially true if you're working and you try to water before you go to work in the morning and you're rushing trying to get out the door and it just slips your mind that you didn't go back out and turn off the water. That's happened to me before and the water's ran for a really long time before I remembered that it was still going and called someone at home to go out and shut it off. You can avoid that by having a timer. Even an inexpensive timer, they're made where you can just turn them on and they will automatically shut off after a certain amount of time. And then there's more expensive timers where you can set a watering plan so it waters every day on and off. And then there's the more elaborate expensive timers that can be controlled from your phone and things like that. It doesn't really matter which type of timer you choose. Any type of timer is gonna make a big difference in your garden. So just choose the one that's right for you and your garden. I hope you enjoyed the video and you got something from those five tips. I know that if you use some of those while setting up your drip irrigation system, you're gonna have a lot more success and a lot less stress. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button and consider subscribing so you can get all my latest content. Thanks for watching, have a good one.